Here are Times TV critic Judy Berman's top five new TV shows for March 2024. They are coming. Who are they? That's the question, right? Netflix's three-body problem might be the biggest TV series to hit Earth this year. The science fiction epic unites Game of Thrones creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss with the terror infamy co-creator Alexander Wu in an adaptation of one of the 21st century's most celebrated books. Chinese author Xu Xin Liu's Hugo-winning Three-Body Problem, published in his home country in 2006, then expanded into a trilogy that has been translated into dozens of languages, is a fascinating novel of ideas. Berman writes, choppily written, dense with theoretical physics and philosophy, and dependent on the depiction of an alien race whose physical form is never described, the book also poses unique challenges for anyone looking to adapt it for the screen. Benioff, Weiss, and Wu have been remarkably successful at transforming Liu's work into a gripping sci-fi thriller without either dumbing it down or boring viewers with hours worth of whiteboard lectures. Let them know you belong. Is that going to stop them from staring? If they stare, stare back. Hi, how you doing? Gorgeous weather we're having. If you want to know how power and identity work within a society, look to its elite private secondary schools, where the stratification is extreme and the students too young to be tactful about it. So it is at St. Gilbert's, the boarding school at the center of the fantastic British teen drama Borders. Yet, in an overdue break from rich kids' soaps like the recently rebooted Gossip Girl and Beverly Hills 90210, this series spotlights a cohort of black scholarship students brought in to diversify the old-fashioned institution in the wake of a scandal. Berman says the show strikes an ideal balance between brutal honesty and empathetic tenderness, social commentary, and fun. Here I come. My first clue. Can't you run DNA on it? I teach earth science. I'm not CSI. Gonna find you. Creator Diara Kilpatrick stars as a teacher who moves back to her old, now gentrifying Detroit neighborhood amid a rough divorce and coaxes herself into the local dating pool. Her first decent Tinder match is such a good lover, she nicknames him Ambien for knocking her out. Then he stands her up for their second date. But Diara, whose colleagues nicknamed her Captain Extra for a reason, refuses to let him ghost. A quest to confront him reveals that he may, in fact, be in serious trouble and that his disappearance could be linked to a crime that shook the city decades ago. Berman says the mystery is intriguing, but the show's real draw are hilarious scripts delivered by a wonderful cast. I've been, like, just trying to maintain being truthful on camera. This is not truth. This is narrative that will be edited, but there will all be choices. That's not truth. As its title suggests, Jared Carmichael reality show continues the eponymous comedian's experiment in radical honesty. Framed and deepened as much as it is leavened by co-creator and star Carmichael's onstage monologues, the perceptive eight-part HBO series is disarmingly frank about not only his personal life, but also about its own constructedness. We watch him produce as the camera rolls, persuading family and friends to discuss hard topics on camera as crew members swarm by. By making us privy to these contrivances, he establishes authenticity with a notoriously artificial genre. How did you get past security? I came in the back. There are no doors on the back of the Pomeria. I never said I used the door. Vietnam, Stonewall, Charles Manson, Easy Rider, Woodstock, the Harlem Cultural Festival, and the tragedy that was Altamont. These are the touchstones that define 1969 in our collective memory. But in the Palm Beach of 1969, as conjured by the delightfully deranged Apple TV Plus soap Palm Royale, they barely register. Insulated from the war, free love, and societal upheaval, the resort community's wealthy denizens have a different set of preoccupations. Like securing membership in the most exclusive social club in town. Berman says that walled haven, a headquarters for ladies who lunch and the husbands who fund their leisurely lifestyles, is called the Palm Royale. Into its haughty, pastel-hued world, vaults, as in literally enters the club by going over its fence, the plucky outsider, Maxine. 
Queen Bee Evelyn, her ascendant rival Dinah, and their clique of frenemies clock the interloper immediately and freeze her out. So begins Maxine's tireless campaign to gain acceptance into Palm Beach society's most rarefied social circle. 